Hi, this is Asya Now, and you're watching the Weekly Wrap. First up in Malaysia, election watchdog Bursa 2.0 chairman Maria Chin Abdullah was released on Monday after 10 days in solitary confinement. She was arrested the day before the Bursa 5 rally two weeks ago, which saw thousands converge in Kuala Lumpur demanding free and fair elections. A day after her release, she received a death threat in the form of a live bullet. The same day, the High Court had struck out her habeas corpus application challenging her detention under a law she said was only meant for terrorists. Next, an Amnesty International report revealed that Indonesian palm oil plantations on the islands of Kalimantan and Sumatra were guilty of labour abuses. The report, which was released on Wednesday, relisted big names like Nestle, Unilever, Kellogg and Procter & Gamble for sourcing palm oil from these plantations. Findings revealed children as young as eight worked in hazardous conditions at plantations run by a Singapore-based company, which make up 43% of the global palm oil trade. The companies responded to say they would investigate the allegations. Nestle, for example, said such practices identified in the report had no place in its supply chain and would work to improve the traceability of the commodity. Still in Indonesia, thousands of protesters streamed into downtown Jakarta on Friday for a rally demanding the arrest of the capital's governor. The Christian governor of Jakarta, Basuki Cahaya Purnama, popularly known as Ahok, is accused of insulting the Quran. Basuki faces blasphemy charges over comments he made about his opponent's use of the Quran in political campaigning. Over in Singapore, China's foreign ministry has lodged a protest with the island republic on Monday after Singaporean armored troop carriers were seized in Hong Kong last week. The vehicles were en route from Taiwan, where they were involved in military exercises between the two countries. The incident has further soured and distrained relations between Singapore and the world power. Moving on, a five-day siege in the Philippines involving fighters linked with the Islamic State ended on Wednesday after troops retook a building where the militants were holed up. President Rodrigo Duterte flew to Lanao del Sur in the southern Philippines to meet with the commanders and soldiers there who battled the Maute group. Just the day before, Duterte's aides and bodyguards were caught in an ambush involving an improvised explosive device as they made their way through the area. We now head over to Bangkok with our Thailand partner, Nation TV, for the latest roundup from the northern ASEAN region. Thank you, Kuala Lumpur. Here are the latest updates from mainland Southeast Asia. Myanmar state workers in contested area to receive temporary salary raise. The salaries of government employees living in the Myanmar township where insurgent activities are active will be doubled during the months of October, November and December. The raise has been granted as an incentive to boost morale of government officials based in this Hmong Da where Muslim separatist attacks are frequent. All of the government employees living and working in the 98 townships and more than 2,800 villages that make up Hmong Da will receive this temporary raise in salary. However, it was clarified that the raise is only for government employees and not applicable to military members stationed in the region. Part of Chinese satellite found in a remote area of Myanmar. A large part of a Chinese rocket fell to Earth in Kachin state of Myanmar shortly after recent launch, causing neither damage nor casualties, but a loud bang when it hit the ground. People living near the crash site near a village initially thought the area was under attack, but they soon discovered a large metal cylinder lying in a shallow crater in a nearby jade mine. A resident who took several photos of the object shortly after it fell to Earth reported its dimensions as 12 feet long and 5 feet in diameter. Photos of the object show that the diameter is different on each end of the cylinder. An expert said that this township, where the object fell, lies along the Chinese satellite's launch trajectory. At the recent Hanoi Wildlife Protection event, there have been greater concerns being raised. The first ever incineration of over 2.2 tons of elephant ivory and over 70 kilograms of rhino horns seized from traffickers was recently conducted in Vietnam amidst greater concerns over wildlife protection. A parallel event on wildlife protection was held in mid-November 
and participated by a number of famous activists and advocates, including Prince William of the United Kingdom. The Duke of Cambridge urged countries to act more quickly, more concretely to save endangered species from extinction, especially a human cost threat, which resulted in 30% decline of elephant populations in Africa in the past seven years. The two-day conference was scheduled to adopt a declaration that will include a roadmap to tangible and unified actions against illegal wildlife trade. Laos to bring back 70% of its forest cover. Laos hopes to restore as much as 70% of its forest cover within the year 2020, which means more trees need to be planted to cover more than 8 million hectares of land. Lao PDR has been facing problems such as deforestation and forest degradation since 1940s. After 1990s, forest cover has reduced to less than 40%. Since then, the country has continuously lost its forest cover. With the Lao government active in raising awareness, many stakeholders, including researchers and policymakers, are involved in a process to bring back the forests in Laos. Cambodian security guards are on duty to clean up the Tongle Sap River. Security guards in Cambodia's capital city were on duty to clean up the Tongle Sap River after a video footage showed the people sweeping trash into the river after a festival. Some guards collected trash from the river in Phnom Penh using bamboo poles, while others with oars or with their bare hands. Plastic bags and food containers were found in the water and on the embankment. A video was posted on Facebook of people sweeping trash into the river, prompting authorities to hire guards for immediate cleanup. And that's it for the updates from mainland Southeast Asia. This has been me, Patsurang Desha Putarangsi. Back to you, KL. Thank you, Bangkok. Thanks for watching. I'm Daniel Bakri, and have a good weekend.